Welcome back. Today we're going to be looking at traditional continuous strand weaving on a triangle loom. This loom in front of me is a 12 inch square loom from Hill Creek Fibers. And this loom has an additional cross beam that you can place in the middle to turn it into a triangle loom. Here you can see I'm placing this piece in and you can see there are some holes and there are bolts with uh, wing nuts that attach this beam to the loom. So now we have a triangle to weave on. Hopefully this smaller size loom will make it easier to see the process. Today I'm just using a blue acrylic yarn from my stash. We'll begin with a slip knot and place that in the on the corner peg of the loom. Take your working yarn all the way across and place it on the first peg. Now we come back to the left side and we go down one peg. I always like to begin my weaving over, under, over, under. So here we're going over, around the second peg at the top, under that first strand, and looping around the next peg. Now you're going to grab that working yarn and you're going to walk it across to the next peg down. And then at the top, make sure you wrap around the top peg. And again, we're going to start over, under, over, under. You can use a crochet hook for this process. You can use your fingers. Uh, an afghan hook works for larger looms. Loop around the next peg down. And then again, walk your working yarn back to the left side. Over, under, over, under. Go around the next empty peg at the top. And down to the bottom. And then once again, walk your yarn across to the other side. Continue this same process until you've wrapped all the pegs on your loom. Moving down one peg each time. We're back on the left side. Straighten out your rows as you go, over, under, over, under, around the next empty peg, and then walk it back over to the right. You do want to leave a little bit of slack and push your yarn into straight rows using your hook. You can use a pick, a hair comb, whatever you have available, a tapestry comb. 
would also work. And we will zoom in a little so that you can see this process a bit more clearly. Here you can see we're zoomed in now on the left side, over, under, over, under, over, under, grab our working yarn, bring it down to the next peg, and then walk your yarn across to the other side. We're going to speed the process up now, keep weaving until you get all the way to the center, and then I will zoom in and show you how to weave those last few rows. You can see I am leaving an arch on each side that gives you slack so that your weaving does not become too tight. You want to keep a nice even tension throughout. Now as you get closer to the center, if you have a small hook, you may have to just do a few strands at a time. Just be sure to look at the strand before you to see which ones you need to pick up. The yarn does become quite tight here, so using a smaller hook makes it easier. Use your tapestry comb or hair comb to separate those strands in the center. 
Don't worry about getting them too close. When you take your weaving off your loom and you wash to block your project, everything evens out. We're on the last peg at the top. But we have one more row to weave after this. It's very tight here, so work slowly. And be sure to keep those two strands separated as best you can. Oops, see? I split the yarn there, so I had to start over. Now we made it to the bottom and that last peg at the end of the triangle. Use your comb again to separate those two strands. And after we have those separated, we will use a tapestry needle to weave one last row through the middle. And cut yourself a nice long tail. And then get your tapestry needle to weave that last row all the way up to the top. Here I am turning the loom around just so I can get a better angle for weaving this through. And I do like to use a tapestry needle that is curved on the end. It makes it a little bit easier to pick up those threads and weave it through. This loom, you'll notice, is wobbling a bit. That is because of the wing nets on the bottom of the loom that are holding the beam across the center.
Now that you've woven that last piece, you will take the tail and weave it in along the end to secure it to your work. You can weave back up the center or you can weave down along the side. Once it's off the loom, you really won't notice this strand. Alright, after you've woven that in and cut off that tail, you do have one other tail left from where you began your weaving. This extra strand I like to leave long in the beginning, the length of my hypotenuse, and I will weave this back in all the way along the top. I find that the weaving, there is usually a gap at the top from the weight of the, uh, if your loom hangs on the wall, you'll find that the weight, it kind of starts to sag at the top and you have a really large gap sometimes, depending on how thick your yarn is. So I like to weave this last tail in along the hypotenuse to help finish off with a nice edge.
Now that you're finished weaving and weaving in all your ends, you need to decide if you want to add fringe to your project. If you do want to add fringe, I recommend adding it now while it's still on the loom. It makes it much easier. All right, if you decided to add fringe, you'll want to do that between each nail. So cut your yarn to the desired length of your fringe. Actually, cut it twice the length of your desired fringe because we're going to fold that yarn in half. You'll take your crochet hook and place it between the nails. I'm just starting in the middle here so you can see between the nails is where you want to place that. Pull it, that loop through and then pull your tails through that loop. You're creating a knot. And that is how you attach your fringe to your triangle shawl. And you'll do that all the way across on each of the short sides, again between the pegs. I'm not going to continue adding for this small sample, but I will start up at the top and begin removing the loops from the peg. It can be a little difficult at the beginning, but once you have a large enough section removed, you can just begin removing it by using your hand. All right, we've successfully removed our project from the loom. You can see there's not a whole lot of stretch to this fabric. This was an acrylic. Uh, if you watched my bias weave video, you will remember it has a lot more stretch. And it looks like I did make a little mistake there and I missed a strand. So I will unweave that first row uh, and correct that. But you've finished your continuous strand weaving, and I hope this was helpful. Thanks for watching.